Half-Life. Half-Life is a concept that can take a while to get your head around, but once you have, it's a fairly simple idea. So when we look at radioactive nuclei, it's impossible to know exactly when one atom will decay, because it happens spontaneously and at random. But we do need some way of knowing how the amount of radiation emitted by a source, which may contain millions of nuclei, will change over time. And this is where half-life comes in. When we look at a source containing millions of nuclei, we can think of it like a bag of coins. If we look at one coin, there's no way of knowing if it will land on heads or tails when we shake the bag. But if we look at all the coins in the bag, we know that roughly half should land heads and half should land tails. So if we have 100 coins and they all start as heads or stable nuclei, after one half-life or one shake of the bag, roughly half or 50 of the coins should have turned to tails. And let's have a go. And we see that's happened. So we say the ones that have turned to tails have decayed. Notice we still have 100 coins, but now only 50 are unstable and are still capable of decaying. So let's let another half-life go by. Let's shake our 50 remaining heads. And we find now we have 25 coins left on heads. So the number of unstable nuclei have halved again. And if we do this a third time, for three half-lives, we find the number of heads decreases again by half, now down to 13 coins. This is exactly how it works with radioactive nuclei. And we actually define the half-life as the amount of time it takes for half the number of unstable nuclei in a source to decay. Now that could be down from a million to 500,000, or it could be down from 10 to 5. It would still take the same amount of time for the same source. So let's look at a radioactive source. Let's look at carbon-14. And we'll represent the unstable nuclei as red, and the stable nuclei as yellow. Okay, so carbon-14 has a half-life of about 5,700 years. So at time equals zero, all the atoms are unstable. But as time progresses, nuclei start to decay at random until at one half-life, 5,700 years, half of the nuclei have decayed and are now stable. As time carries on, nuclei carry on decaying, but it's happening less often until after two half-lives, the number of unstable nuclei have halved again, leaving only 25% of the original unstable nuclei remaining. As we progress along, we can see that the number of decays happening is decreasing even further, or the activity of the source is decreasing as time goes on. Actually, we can also say that half-life is the time taken for the activity of a source to decrease by half. So finally, as time is progressing, we get to six half-lives, and only 1% of the unstable atoms remain. And this has taken us 34,200 years. Now let's quickly look at another nuclei, iodine-123. Now this has a half-life of only 13 hours, so it will still take six half-lives to reach 1% unstable nuclei, but it will do this much quicker, in only 78 hours. So, what are the key points to remember? Well, we need to remember that nuclei decay spontaneously and at random, and it's impossible to know when this will happen for individual nuclei. So instead, we use the concept of half-life, which is the time it takes for half of the unstable nuclei to decay.